everyone, it is Matt here from Scoop in Response, and today we are looking at another commander that is releasing with Dominaria. It's a Stang Echo Warrior, it's a uh, two red green commander, it's a three four human warrior, and it reads, whenever Stang attacks, create a Stang Twin, a legendary three four red and green human warrior creature token. It enters the battlefield tapped and attacking, and for each aura and equipment attached to Stang, create a token copy of it that is attached to Stang Twin. Sacrifice all tokens created this way at the beginning of the next end step. So uh, this is obviously a Voltron commander that's, uh, you know, a bit different, I guess, because we're actually creating copies that uh, duplicate all of your uh, all of your auras, all of your, you know, swords, everything like that, that you've got equipped to it. Really sweet uh, concept. Um, there's really a lot of ways to sort of build this uh, list. I've kind of taken the approach where we are looking at sort of sitting in the middle of a few different strategies. So we're going to be using elements of Enchantress, elements of Voltron, uh, elements of Stacks. And basically we're going to be, I, I believe this deck is quite powerful. I think it's quite strong. Uh, I, I don't believe that um, you can have any trouble sort of, you know, slugging it at the high power tables with this. The few things to note though, is we are playing quite a few cards that uh, probably pull a bit of hate. So there's a few controversial cards in here that you'll see. Um, I would say that uh, if you're not wanting to lean into the stacks lines and you're wanting to play something that's a little bit more f uh, fun for, for everyone, I like playing against and playing stacks, so it's sort of hard for me to comment. But basically, uh, you know, if you're wanting to sort of cut some of these hate pieces, I would just say to, to swap out any of those pieces for maybe a few extra Umbras or something like that uh, and lean it more into the Voltron effect. Um, the other thing worth noting with uh, with this commander, we've not included it in this list, but I thought it was super worthwhile to mention, is if you look at cards that end the turn, it means that you won't sacrifice uh, all of the tokens that you have created this turn because they sacrifice an end step. If you consider that you wanted to make, say, swords uh, in particular, because they can actually be equipped elsewhere when they're a token, whereas the aura cannot. But the cool thing about some of the auras uh, in particular in this list is that there are enchantresses that trigger on ETB rather than on cast. And so we're including those in the list. So every time Stang Twin attacks, it's got, or well, sorry, every time you create a Stang Twin, it will re redraw cards for you because of those auras attached to it. We'll jump into the deck. We'll have a look at this now uh, and see what the list has for us. So first up we have four creatures. We've got uh, Allosaurus Shepherd, uh, Arbor Elf, Birds of Paradise, Elvish Mystic, Finhorn Elves, Lanawai Elves, Orcish Lumberjack, and Quirion Ranger rounding out the one drops. So these shouldn't really come as any surprise for a red green deck. We are looking to, to ramp out with our creatures. You know, obviously they're the best in green. So I want to take advantage of that fact. Most of all, Allosaurus Shepherd for a cannot be counted effect, really good. Um, and then we've got uh, Orcish Lumberjack for some really serious ramp if we really want to be sacrificing to, to sort of ramp up quite quickly. For our two drops now, we have Bloom Tender, we've got Destiny Spinner, Dockside Extortionist, Goblin Engineer, Herald of the Pantheon, Priest of Titania, Sanctum Weaver, and Vexing Shusha. We've got really good ramp with Bloom Tender. You know, we're going to get two for two with this one. Destiny Spinner is another can't be counted. So you, you'll notice a pattern here with the Allosaurus Shepherd and the, the Destiny Spinner. We've got other effects as well that prevent things from being counted. Vexing Shusha. Because we're not in blue, we can't play counter spells. So we're just going to stop our stuff from being counted, basically. Dockside Extortionist is a bit of a win con. You'll see that with the uh, the team of Sabretooth as well. We can be bouncing and creating infinite tokens with the Dockside Extortionist loop. Goblin Engineer is a great artifact tutor and there's uh, specifically a few artifacts that we want to be tutoring for in this list. We'll go into that in a bit of detail a bit later on. Herald of the Pantheon, uh, it means our auras cost one less. Whenever we cast an enchantment spell, we gain a life. So really, really cool. More ramp with Titania. Sanctum Weaver is another really, really good ramp creature in this uh, in this deck. Uh, tap for a any number of tap for any color where X is the number of champions you control. So it's a Sarah Sanctum basically, except you can tap it for any color. So really, really good. Combat Celebrant um, is basically we're going to be using this uh, with uh, the likes of Perforos 
and Sword of Hearth and Home. If we want to, we can take infinite combat steps. So there's lots of things uh, that's really sweet about this list. Uh, and it's actually, it's been probably a year since I've just put together a straight uh, red green commander. And um, man, red can just do so much now. Red's just got so many things that it just couldn't do. Um, you know, red green, sorry, uh, can just do so much. And it's just, it blows my mind to be honest. Um, but yeah, so we've got, um, we've got Eternal Witness. Um, it's just good graveyard recursion. Hyrax Tower Scout. Uh, so you're probably wondering what that's doing in here. We've got Clothus, God of Destiny. This is just really good chip damage and incidental ramp. Um, really, really sweet. Magus of the Moon because we're red green we're going to be playing our moons we just have to uh manglehorn uh it's etb destroy target artifact and artifacts enter tapped so really really good um so that's some champion is one of those uh enchantresses that will draw an etb so uh yeah really really cool i don't know how to pronounce this one properly Chishiro the Shattered Blade. So this is serves for two reasons. One is we need more creatures in our four drop slot and there's a reason for that which we'll get into. But this says whenever an aura or equipment enters the battlefield under your control, create a 2-2 red spirit creature with menace. And at the end step, put a plus one counter on each modified creature you control. So when you have your uh, Stang Twin enter the battlefield each turn when you're attacking and you've got a sword and two auras attached to it, you make three one ones. So uh, three two twos rather. That's so really, really good for creating, um, you know, additional blockers, just getting that army size up a little bit more. Eidolon of Blossoms, we have another Enchantress on ETB. So once again, for Stang Twin, when it enters each turn, it creates uh, all of those auras and you get the additional card draws. So, you know, three or four cards every turn is pretty damn sweet. Team of Sabertooth, so you can return a creature you control to its own its hand and use it to bounce Dockside. You can use it to bounce any of your other ETBs. You could bounce the Hyrax Tower Scout or you could bounce the Goblin Engineer to go and entomb another artifact. All kinds of weird and wonderful things you can do. There's also uh, some more loops that you could do with something like Perforos. So um, if you uh, have haste on the battlefield, you bounce the team, you bounce a Sanctum Weaver for two mana, you cast it again, and because it has haste, you can tap it. If it has more than two uh, pips to tap for, then yeah, you basically got, uh, you know, you can, you can tap for infinite mana by completing that loop over and over again. Um, so you need to be able to make, uh, yeah, so two to bounce it, two for uh, the cost. So you need uh, five enchantments total, which in this deck should be super easy. This is also an enchantment, so it counts as one. Perforos is also an enchantment, so it counts as one. So you should be able to get, you know, finding another three to do that loop should be super easy. Timeless Witness is a four drop, which is relevant for our list but it allows us to you know recur creatures and it also has eternalize so if we were to sacrifice it for some reason then we would be able to recast it from the well sorry activate its eternalize ability and get the effect again in the fifth five drop slots we have uh fury kiki jiki perforos and seedborn muse and so by now you probably worked out that the the jig is kind of up we've got uh pod lines in this list so the pod lines are as follows, you know, you've got Dockside Extortionist at two, that's going to generate you enough mana. You pod the Dockside into Hyrax Tower Scout, uh, that will untap your pod. Uh, then you pod the uh, Hyrax Tower Scout into a Timeless Witness to get back your Hyrax Tower Scout. You cast the Hyrax Tower Scout again and untap the pod and then you tap the pod and pod the timeless witness into kiki jiki making infinite hyrax tower scouts uh to swing for the win now the cool thing is starting with dockside extortionist from this so i think you need about six mana total um to to sort of make that or sorry you need to be able to make six uh treasure tokens from the dockside and to be able to cast the dockside or to have just you know eight mana total um, or a six mana with a two drop. So it's really not that hard to do in this deck. Uh, really, really like reasonable in that respect. Um, and there's also like easier ways where like if you have the Sanctum Weaver out or something like that, you know, you've got these this option to, to pivot into the Team of Sabretooth route and uh, and go from there. So the Seaborn Muse is just for value untaps. Uh, you know, seeing as we're attacking so much, it'll be nice to, to be able to untap them, everything like that, really sweet. 
And Perforos, you've also got the effect where you can kiki jiggy in the uh, like through Perforos, and then just you couldn't create all of your tokens and, and go for the win there. And it's just sort of like a slightly cheaper way of doing it. So if you yeah, if you got the kiki jiggy in hand, you pod the timeless witness into a Perforos, uh, and then you use Perforos' ability to uh, basically yeah bring the kiki jiggy in for for a bit cheaper. So that's uh that's our uh, creatures um we'll move on to enchantments next carpet of flowers exploration these are just too good not to include in pretty much any green deck that you're playing any matter where you think that there's a chance of blue spells carpet of flowers is great i think it's just such a low opportunity cost anyway when are you not going to have you know one blue player at least in a pod exploration you know getting those extra ramp uh those extra land drops is super useful for our first aura spell, we've got Rancor, which is, it's quite, uh, you know, it's quite humble in its uh, existence. It just gets plus two and uh, trample, for plus two power rather and trample. And when it's put into the graveyard, return it to its owner's hand. So, you know, just nice bit of recursion uh, built into Rancor. So if your commander gets removed, you get this back too. Really good. Uh, trample, super relevant keyword as well, obviously. Utopia Sprawl, Wild Growth, you know, these are just uh, to increase our um, our ramp, uh, you know, and also trigger the Enchantress effect sometimes, so super sweet with there, and increasing our enchantment uh, count for Sanctum Weaver and the like. Cinder Vines, just a nice bit of removal that's strapped to an enchantment. Kenrith's Transformation, nice bit of removal strapped to an enchantment. Rolling Vortex is just to stop people gaining infinite life. Uh, and you know, when players cast spells, they can't play free spells. So really sweet there. And they get pinged each to every player gets pinged for one each turn. So Sylvan Library, another great card, uh, just card draw, card advantage, everything like that. Ancestral Mask uh, is a card, it's actually on the screen right now, but it's definitely in the list. I probably put it somewhere else. Um, so Enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus two for each other enchantment in play. So if you say you have you know two or three enchantments uh, and then this uh, attached to your Stang Twin, as soon as you create the next copy of the Stang Twin, they increase so dramatically. You know you're going to have like lethal commander damage so quickly. Even if it was just those two enchantments on the field, it's one, two, three, four. So it's getting plus eight, plus eight on both of them with trample. So you know you're just absolutely hosing people. It's 11, 12, 13 commander damage, uh, you know, a turn with trample just with those two those two enchantments in play. So it's insane. Blood Moon, because we're going to be Blood Mooning, also an enchantment, extra good. Choke, because, you know, not only do we want our uh, opponents to play islands with Carpet of Flowers, but we also want them to not be able to use those islands with Choke. So I think this card's great uh, as well. Once again, such a low opportunity cost. You know, even when you're in a pod with no blue players, you don't have to play it out. You just play it for, uh, you know, an Enchantress trigger to draw a card if you need to. Growing Rights of Itlamok uh, is a Gaia's Cradle. And also you get to look at a creature on the top four cards. Rhythm of the Wild this is our third, I think, or maybe fourth, uh, can't be counted um, spell. Non-token creatures you control have riots, so they enter with haste or plus one, plus one. Now this is an additional way to sort of get those loops with uh, the team of Sabretooth and Sanctum Weaver that we spoke about. So you can be using the Rhythm of the Wild to bounce, uh, well you use the Sabretooth to bounce the Sanctum Weaver and because of the Rhythm of the Wild it gets haste when it comes back in if you would like it to. So yeah, super useful with that. Um, Song of the Dryads, more removal attached to enchantments. Bear Umbra, really, really good for this, um, you know, because you get two untaps. So we don't have a whole bunch of instants, but we do have some activated abilities that are quite... Um, Defense of the Heart, I think, is just a great card. We will most of the time search up something like Perforos and a Fury, or Perforos and Seedborn Muse, or Perforos and Kiki Jiki, maybe. Something like that, something at the top end. We, you know, we don't have these big haymakers. There's no Eldrazi's or Crater Hoof Behemoths, but just having like haste on all of our creatures or, or being able to get all, everything out that we need to. Team of Sabertooth and Dockside Extortionist for infinite mana. Like that's pretty insane, you know, just starting your turn and you've got infinite mana straight away. Like absolutely insane. Um, Lane Line of Abundance, uh, and it's, it's an enchantment, so, you know, really good there. Sometimes you get to have it for free when you enter the game. And, you know, your creatures tap for two, so that's, like, dope. Splitter Twin is, uh, 
you know another basically another combo that we can have access to so you put the splinter twin piece on hyrax tower scout uh and basically just create the infinite mana that way so really good there it's an enchantment as well so hey look in incidental synergy again um really really sweet and lastly we've got stranglehold i know there's not a lot of extra turn spell decks like running around generally but this is just nice opponents can't search libraries being attached to an enchantment is really interesting and given that it's a four drop as well, it actually sort of gets around a reasonable amount of removal. You know, things like prismatic uh, ending is a little bit harder to be uh, cast and targeted with. Uh, you've got to exile two cards with the March of Otherworldly Light. Those two in particular are the ones that I'm sort of thinking of. It also gets around Abrupt Decay because it's a four drop. So yeah, it sort of just dodges a, a few bits of incidental removal and uh you know when you when you're sort of having to pick and choose your removal because you can't search this is quite useful so that's pretty much it for the enchantments we'll move into the everything else category so starting with our artifacts we've got lotus petal mana crypt soul ring shouldn't really need to explain much about them they all should be straightforward swift foot boots because we want to give our stang a hex proof you know we want to make sure our commander can get in and this is probably the cheapest and easiest way we do not want to use lightning greaves lightning greaves gives shroud that means we can't target them so do not use lightning greaves in this deck it is bad winter orb no player may untap more than one land during his or her untap phase this is the unfun stuff that i was sort of talking about uh i think this is really sweet in a dork deck because if you're playing uh you know all of these all of these dorks to create mana or you've got like one or two lands that have an aura on them and uh you know that taps for two you're breaking parity real easy static orb same thing um players can't untap more than two permanents during their untap steps thing to pick and choose between untapping their creatures to block or their lands and uh yeah i think both of these work really well we don't want to be tapping them we're not looking to like do any like tap on tap shenanigans use them in a more fair way we've got swords we've got sword of fire and ice sword of hearth and hope so Sophie's just really good in general. Card draw, you know, two two cards a turn, pretty damn sweet. Um, you know, when you've got one on each of your Stang twins. Sort of Hearth and Home, as we mentioned earlier, it's for the infinite combat steps with Combat Celebrant. So very sweet there. With this one, um, you know, getting basic lands is really good because it gets you out, like if you've mistakenly made a greedy Blood Moon fetch or something like that, or, you know, someone's playing a back to basics, this is a way to like get out from under that uh, that issue. And you'll notice here, like everything here, except for the one card at the end. Uh, oh, look, there's the Ancestral Mask, right. Um, the, the, the one birthing pod, um, all of these things can be tutored for by your Goblin Engineer. So all the swords, got Tangle Wire, which is, you know, just you just tap in upkeep, so really sweet. Um, and it's, you know, just temporary, you know, we're just buying turns, we're just biding our time with that kind of stuff. And lastly, we've got Trinisphere. Um, now you'll notice, We've got some spells that are, you know, one and two mana, but mostly we're not a two or three spell a turn deck. We're just, you know, happy to play our one spell a turn and then hold up, you know, protection, things like that. So it's it's really, I think, quite useful for us. We can, you know, beat up on all of the cantrip decks and this is really gonna be fighting blue decks. Maybe it's built a little bit to fight blue decks too much. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, that's the idea. And then we've got pod, uh, you know, pod, you can use it for value or you can use it for that chain that I described earlier, um, really sweet. So I would say like if, if you're not looking to play like that really sort of stack, stacksy game with, with the Winter Orb and Static Orb, which are also brutal if you're going to go and get them with your Goblin Engineer as well. If you're not looking to play that game, um, you know, I would say cut these for some more auras, some more swords, something like that. There is also a card called Sundial of the Infinite, which lets you end the turn each turn and it's on an artifact. So it's not like a, you know, it's not a one shot, it's every turn. If you have a higher density of your equipment, then it would definitely be worth running that so that you can just make so many of these artifacts, you know, token. Imagine making like putting six sword of fire and ice on, you know, your commander. It's just insane. It's absolutely mental. You just end the turn before we get to the end step because there's no end step, the tokens don't sacrifice. After that, we've got two Planeswalkers. We've got Domri and our Kavolus. Uh, creatures you control get plus one, plus O. Oh. Um, add a red. Creature spells can't be counted this turn. So really sweet. And then you've got a fight, but no one cares about the fight. Uh, maybe you do sometimes. Doesn't really matter. Um, Minskin Boo. 
It's got a lot of text, uh, it's probably a bit difficult to read. So, um, when Minsk and Boo, uh, Timeless Heroes, ETBs, you make your Boo, which is a 1-1 one, one red hamster creature token with Trample and Haste. You put three counters onto it and it gets Trample for the plus one. And then you can sacrifice the creature and it will do that damage to any uh, target. So you can neg to it to do four damage to something. And then if it was a hamster, you draw X cards. So if you were to say, make your hamster and then you put a sword on your hamster and you attack with your hamster uh, which has haste and basically yeah you've got this you know three three hamster it's got haste you get your sword trigger and then you sack it for th draw three cards insane and then next up keep you create a new boot you just it's just insane it, it, every turn you can do it so Really, really good, really good card. Uh, I, I was sleeping on this card for too long. I think it's just absolutely insane. Uh, okay, after Minsk and Boo, we have Instants and Sorceries. So we've got Green Sun Zenith, Finale of Devastation, and Eldritch Evolution. I'm gonna talk about these three in the same sort of vein. Um, they are all just tutors, and they are all to just go and get the things that you need. Super useful targets, uh, you know, Green Suns just make sure that you only get green creatures because you can't get non-green ones. Finale is also a win con because you can, you know, make infinite mana there and you just X is a million and you get plus X plus X and uh, everyone has haste and trample and everything else. Not trample, sorry, but yeah, haste. And uh, go and find some trample dude or something. I'm not sure, whatever you like, it's your life. Um, Eldritch Evolution, uh, great way to cheat things up, you know, particularly if you got the pot out and you don't really have like a way to start the chain efficiently, you know, you, you, you pod your Birds of Paradise into a Tower Scout or something like that and yeah, just go from there, it's just sweet. Um, instance, we've got our uh, three protection spells, so Pyroblast, Red Elemental Blast, Veil of Summer. So you see, I really want to fight uh, these... Uh, these blue decks. So these are just the best counter spells or removal spells that you could ask for. Veil of Summer is just great to, you know, protect your your um, thing from being countered again, or maybe they're trying to fatal push something and you're just gonna say no. So all in all, that's pretty much the, the, the list aside from lands. We'll check out the lands, which are quite straightforward. So big thing I wanna stress is with these kind of combat centric decks, I think the most important thing to do with your mana base is to have consistency. So, you, you know, there's lots of incidental cards. Um, you know, you could probably make an argument for Ancient Tomb, I think is probably perfectly reasonable. City of Traders, maybe not so much. Um, but other than that, we just want to make sure that we're always going to be able to, you know, do our thing, get our forests, get our, uh, you know, uh, we've got our cradle, we've got, we've got two blood moons. So you're not gonna always be able to have access to your utility lands, which is why we keep it really, really simple. You know, you've got a few dual lands. Uh, we've got, you know, tranquil, tranquil thicket for cycling. That's really good. You could play the red one too, if you'd like. We've got fetch lands, we've got Yavimaya, but that's pretty much it. Oh, and the channel lands beside you and so can Zan, because they're basically spells. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much the list. Um, I, I think this I think this uh, command is like absolutely so sick. Like, just you you can lean into so many directions, and and I guess like the reason that I've put the list together this way uh, is so that you can sort of get a taste for the multiple directions that you'd want to go. You could play this purely as equipment, or you could play this purely as auras only enchantress type stuff, and you just churn through your deck with like you know all these one mana auras and go from there. You can you can build this in like a hundred different ways, and it will be sweet. So that's pretty much the the the, the deck tech. Um, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed the the list. Um, we've been doing a lot of Dominaria content, and it's just been so exciting. I've felt I've been so inspired with this set. I just feel like there's just so many great commanders to look at, and they're all like pretty unique. Like this is definitely on color it's gruel but it's like oh this is sick we can actually do something with this you know we don't have to play white or blue for enchantments for for this kind of deck if we don't want to and that's uh yeah that's really sweet to sort of see some new design space sort of happen uh and and yeah um the channel's been growing just so much lately um we just hit a thousand subscribers yesterday as the day i'm recording this and i just can't thank you guys enough for for subbing up uh it, it it's been quite slow up until 
I guess uh, the last month or so for the channel, you know, we've been operating for two years now and uh, you know, we weren't getting a lot of uptick and that seems to have just really like, like taken a big stride forward, um, you know, in the last month or so. And just, it's awesome to see just how much it's growing. And I really appreciate everyone who's subbing. Um, so thanks so much. And I really hope you enjoyed this list. Um, and I'm curious to see how others are going to build this list. I would say that this is a great commander for, uh, you, you definitely will be able to look at EDA Trek for, for this kind of commander, but you're gonna get weird, weird uh, results if you're just looking at the default because there's just so many archetypes that this commander goes into. So yeah, thanks so much for checking out the video and I will see you guys next time. Bye for now.